there's a large group, a large contingent of boxing fans out there who I think boxing gossip termed them boxing trendies. I think that's the word he used, boxing trendies. is a good term because these are basically people who think of themselves as hardcore boxing fans, but all they ever really do is try and look cool by hating on the fighters with big fan bases and supporting the fighters who are seen as anti-heroes. They think it makes them cool to do this kind of thing. They're not really interested in who actually is the best. They just want to believe that the fighters with big fan bases are all frauds, you know, or a lot of them anyway. And a lot of these boxing trendies are Tyson Fury fans. Now, I like Tyson Fury. I think he's a very talented fighter and I can't wait until he gets back in a boxing ring. But at the same time, I'm, I'm objective. I'm not a fanboy like a lot of these boxing trendies are when it comes to Tyson Fury. They hold Fury up as the legit and real heavyweight champion and they constantly bash the likes of Anthony Joshua, Joseph Parker and Deontay Wilder and call them frauds and say they're not legitimate champions. It's Fury who's the real champion. Well, let's explore this a little bit. They are saying that Fury is the real champion based on what? Based on one win against Vladimir Klitschko. Not a whole resume full of top wins. No, one win. Just based on one win, they say he's the real champion and the rest of them are frauds. As far as I'm concerned, that don't stand up to scrutiny. If you go back and, you know, he is lineal champion and he did beat Vladimir Klitschko in good fashion. That's understood. But if you go back in history, you look at Michael Spinks. He beat Larry Holmes and became the lineal heavyweight champion. He then vacated his IBF belt because he didn't want to enter the HBO heavyweight tournament, which Mike Tyson was in. Tyson ended up winning the HBO heavyweight tournament and he fought Michael Spinks a few years later. Spinks went into the ring against Tyson as the lineal heavyweight champion, the man who beat the man who beat the man going back many, many years. Tyson wasn't the lineal champion. Did it matter? Not really. The overwhelming majority of the boxing public believed Tyson was going to win. The overwhelming major majority of the public saw Tyson as the legit champion anyway, despite the fact he wasn't lineal champion. And we know what happened in the fight. It, last it lasted like 91 seconds. So lineal champion or not, he still got wiped out, Michael Spinks. A more recent example would be Adonis Stevenson. Adonis Stevenson is still to this day the lineal light heavyweight champion. Andre Ward was not lineal champion. Sergei Kovalev is not lineal champion. Artur Baturbiev is not lineal champion. None of these guys are lineal champions. Adonis Stevenson is. But is Stevenson seen as the legit and real light heavyweight champion by the majority of the boxing public, hardcore and casual alike? Casual alike? No, he isn't. Why? Because you can't hang your claim to be the man in your division on one win. You can't hang your claim to be the man in the division solely based on the fact that you're lineal champion. That don't stand up to scrutiny. Stevenson had the first round knockout win over champion to become lineal, uh, over Chad Dawson to become lineal champion, sorry. He beat Tony Bellew, which in hindsight is a good win. But other than that, he ain't really done anything, <laughs> you know? And this is why even today, he's not looked at as the man in the light heavyweight division by anyone really, other than maybe himself and his own clique. And you look at Tyson Fury, you look at his record, people, other than Vladimir Klitschko, who has Tyson Fury beat? What, Derek Chisora? An old cruiserweight in Steve Cunningham who dropped him in the second round and who was ahead on all the judges scorecards at a time when Fury managed to get the win? And Fury got the win in a lot of people's eyes by using illegal tactics, holding and hitting. And that's one of his best wins. Derek Chisora, he beat twice. Chisora is a fringe contender. Who's Chisora ever beat? And then Christian Hammer. Those are Tyson Fury's three best wins. And and that's that's it. That's all he's beaten other than the Vladimir Klitschko win. So people are literally holding this Klitschko win in extremely high regard and saying, well, he's just way better than all the other heavyweight champions. Really? Based on one win? The rest of his resume is very thin, people. 
relatively speaking anyway. It's no stronger than Andy Joshua's resume. Facts. You look at Joshua's resume. He's fought Carlos Takam. I'm telling you now, Takam's better than Derek Chisora. Takam's got wins over people like Mike Perez. You know, Gregory Tony and He's mixed at high level. Actually, was the win over... No, sorry, it wasn't a win over Perez. It was a draw. But for all intents and purposes, that was really a win. Yeah, anyone who saw the fight, you'll probably say that Takam won it. But still, I'm saying Takam is better than Derek Chisora. Certainly, David Hay believes he's better than Derek Chisora. He sparred Carlos Takam. I'm certainly saying Carlos Takam is also better than Christian Hammer. My opinion... I say he's a better, more effective heavyweight than Steve Cunningham. And you look at the other guys on Joshua's resume. Dylan White and Dominic Brazil. They're his two other best wins outside of Klitschko and Takam. Dominic Brazil has got a win over Amir Mansour. That's a good win. Amir Mansour is a tough, hard-punching fringe contender. He's also got a win over Izu Ogono, who is an upcoming contender. A young guy, a hungry guy, a guy with talent. Dominic Brazil just knocked him out. So I'm not saying these are amazing names at all on Joshua's resume. All I'm telling you is there's not much difference between the quality of opposition that Joshua has fought other than Klitschko and the quality of opposition that Fury has fought. Their resumes are about the same, people. <laughs> like You know, you can compare a Dylan White as a heavyweight to a Steve Cunningham in terms of how good they are. Cunningham, pound for pound, is better than Dylan White. But in terms of as a heavyweight... Like Cunningham's nothing special as a heavyweight, never was. You know, he managed to beat Amir Mansour on points. Dominic Brazil, who Joshua fought and beat, Dominic Brazil stopped Amir Mansour. So, you know, their resumes are very similar. So why is it that Fury is seen by these boxing trendies as the man? And Joshua was seen as a fraud. What, based on one win? They both beat Klitschko, so what? Fury beat Klitschko without taking punishment. True. And he was the man to defeat Klitschko when Klitschko was on a long run. And he also defeated Klitschko when Klitschko was active, whereas Joshua fought him when Klitschko had been out the ring for a long while. That's all true. But just because Fury had an easier time with Klitschko, that don't mean that he's necessarily going to beat Anthony Joshua. I mean, he might beat him, but I don't necessarily mean that. And I'll give you an example. Amir Khan fought Marcus Maidana, right? You all remember that. He went life and death with Marcus Maidana. Now, he won the fight, in my eyes, legitimately on the cards. But, boy, he came close to getting knocked out in that fight. He took a hell of a lot of punishment, didn't he, against Marcus Maidana. A couple years later, Devon Alexander fought Marcus Maidana. And he beat Maidana more comprehensively than anyone has ever beaten him. He beat Maidana even easier than Mayweather beat Maidana both times. Facts. But yet, what happened when Khan fought Alexander? I don't think Alexander won a round against Khan. So just because Alexander beat Maidana a lot easier, it didn't mean he was going to beat Khan, did it? Because boxing is chess, it ain't checkers, it's rock, paper, scissors. And so, don't be hanging all your hopes on Fury beating Joshua on the way that he performed against Klitschko, because Joshua is not Klitschko. Just in the same way as Devon Alexander couldn't hang his hopes on, you know, of beating Amir Khan on the fact that Khan struggled against Maidana, whereas he didn't. Alexander didn't struggle. He beat Maidana easy. Don't think Maidana won around in that fight barely. So, this is why I'm telling these boxing trendies and these. Fury fanboys, you know, I like Fury, but I'm no fanboy, <laughs> you know, I'm coming from an objective standpoint, and I'm saying to you that the resumes of Fury and Joshua are barely any different in terms of quality, uh, and actually, you could be a little more impressed by what Joshua has done, because he's done the same as Fury, he's got the same resume as Fury, basically, but he's done it in less fights, he's done it in 20 fights, Fury took five more fights to do it. 25. So Joshua's done it in fewer fights. When Joshua fought Klitschko, what was it? His 19th fight? When Fury fought Klitschko, it was his 25th. So 
You know, you can say, yeah, Joshua was on the floor against Klitschko. He also stopped Klitschko, something Fury didn't do. And how would have Tyson Fury fared against Klitschko if he'd fought Klitschko in his 19th fight? Because in his, what is this here? In his 20th fight against Steve Cunningham, he was dropped by Cunningham. So the fight before he fought Kevin Johnson. So around these times, maybe Fury would have found himself on the floor against Klitschko. He certainly found himself on the floor against Cunningham, didn't he? Yeah? So again, man, let's just be real here. Let's not make Tyson Fury out to be head and shoulders above the rest of the heavyweight division in terms of his resume. You can talk about potential. You can talk about you think his style will be everybody else. Cool. But let's not act as though he's already proved himself to be the best. He hasn't. He hasn't. His resume is no better than Joshua's resume. He's still got it all to prove in terms of being crowned as the man in the heavyweight division as far as I'm concerned. They all have. They've all got it to prove. Joshua's got it to prove. Fury's got it to prove. Parker and Wilder. And to Joshua's credit, him, well, to him and Parker's credit, they're getting it on, it looks like. They're going to fight. Andy Joshua and Joseph Parker so maximum props to them especially if the fight gets signed and it goes ahead if Joshua ends up beating Parker then there can be no question at all that his resume is better than Tyson Fury's resume if he actually beats Parker then he has then he has three of the championship belts which he's you know gone out and knocked somebody out to get and the quality of opposition that he would have beaten would be better overall more top level fighters than Tyson Fury's would have been if he manages to beat Parker there'll be no question about it so yeah just wanted to put that video out there people let's think about these things rationally <laughs> let's not be one of these boxing trendies that just thinks it's cool to rip down Joshua because he's mainstream and support the anti-hero just because he's an anti-hero if you have the ability to be objective you'll see that there's really nothing in it when it comes to their resumes at all. Uh, Joshua went in with Klitschko when he was not as ready as Fury was, but he still got the win, you know? In Fury's 20th fight, he got dropped by Cunningham. In Joshua's 19th fight, he got dro dropped by Klitschko, which looks worse, getting dropped by Cunningham or getting dropped by Klitschko in your 19th fight or your 20th fight? You tell me. <laughs> Drop your comments in the comment section below, people. Let me know how you feel. It's happening, I'm out.